Lurking deep within the recesses of your amazing human brain lies a power. It's a power that even the most intelligent animal cannot claim. A power that's been used since 60,000 BC by some of the world's most successful people from all walks of life. It's the power of visualization. And according to Dr. Lee Poulos, it's the finest tool you have for creating personal change. Visualization has been around since the beginning of time. As I discuss in the history of visualization, it's been used for 50, 60,000 years. As a matter of fact, Aristotle said that the soul cannot think without pictures. Every major discovery in the history of ideas, in the history of science, from Einstein's theory of relativity, which came to him in kind of a waking visualization, daydream, to the discovery of how the benzene molecule comes together, all of this was achieved through visualization. First of all, you have a thought picture, and then you translate it to action. The Nightingale Conan Corporation is pleased to introduce you to Dr. Lee Poulos and his groundbreaking program, The Power of Visualization. You may have heard about the incredible results that athletes have produced by visualizing their performance in advance. You may have even used visualization yourself to increase sales or decrease stress. But you've probably thought of visualization as a vague ability to see things in the mind's eye. This audio seminar will take you to a whole new level by showing you that visualization is a science, a powerful technology with specific steps and guidelines that, when followed, produce measurable results. For example, you'll learn the image streaming technique, a unique process for enhancing your visualization ability. You'll learn how to apply the visualization process to areas like raising self-esteem, uncovering subconscious roadblocks, habit control, and self-healing. You'll even gain a new understanding of the relationship between visualization and goal achievement. Once you've completed this mental marathon, you'll have a complete set of tools you can use to affect nearly every area of your life. Now, join Dr. Poulos and begin the process of actualizing your greatest dreams. Hi, I'm Lee Pullis, and I would like to welcome you to this life-transforming experience, the power of visualization. Like yourself, I have been unconsciously using visualization all my life. I daydreamed excessively as a youngster, creating scenarios that sometimes went beyond imagination. For a number of reasons, valid at the time, I became a high school dropout at the age of 16, ran away from home, and joined the Navy. Fortunately, I was assigned to a psychologist's office, assisting in the administration of paper and pencil tests. I loved what I was doing, and the fire was lit. I wanted to become a psychologist, day in, day out. I dreamed, imagined, fantasized every facet of my career before taking special tests that allowed me to enter college as a veteran on the GI Bill. The waking dreams continued, and today, Imaging and visualizing or programming my dreams is as much a part of my daily routine as eating or working out. I have used visualization from everything ranging from accelerating the healing response following knee surgery to achieving financial goals and achieving success as an author. The goal of this program is to make the visualization process conscious and systematic. This will be achieved by combining the latest in scientific research with ancient wisdom from the shamanic traditions. Let us carry on and see how user-friendly this powerful process can be. The most successful executives have the ability for translating their goal into an actual physical vision, utilizing all five senses. The more adept visualizers claimed that the greater the detail, the quicker and more likely the attainment of their vision. Stephen DeVore is the former CEO and chairman of CyberVision, a company that creates training videos for improving performance through visual modeling. In a collaborative study with researchers from the MBA programs at Harvard, Yale, and Stanford, DeVore pointed out that the most common characteristic of chief officers of major U.S. corporations was, and I quote, these people knew what they wanted out of life. They could see it. 
taste it, smell it, and imagine the sounds and feelings associated with their goals. They actually believed they had it and behaved as if they had it before achieving their dream. This sharp sensory vision became one of the most powerful driving forces in their lives. James Hickman, a sports psychologist at the Washington Research Center in San Francisco, calls visualization the most widely applied mental tool in modern sports. This certainly matches my own experience as sports psychologist for Team Canada and other professional teams such as the Edmonton Oilers and Vancouver Canucks. However, I would go even further and state that the most common trait of all high-performance persons and superachievers is that they have developed the uncommon ability to see or sense what they want in life in 3D well before they achieve it. There's no end to modern-day examples of achieving goals through visualization. In his classic self-help book, Psycho-Cybernetics, Dr. Maxwell Maltz described how Conrad Hilton created mental pictures of himself owning a hotel before he acquired his first one. James Hickman reported that when Bruce Jenner was preparing for his 1976 Olympic decathlon, for which he won the gold medal, he would train by doing a mental workout with a hurdle in his living room each evening after dinner. These mental movies and rehearsals became so ingrained into his subconscious that the visualizations continued during sleep, and his wife could always tell which event he was imaging by the way his body moved and angled while dreaming. Incidentally, Jenner claimed that most of his athletic successes were due to his strict regimen of mental practice since age five, as he didn't feel he was a natural athlete. Similarly, John Townsend used mental movies to increase his income. He'd been fluctuating between $18,000 and $27,000 a year, working in various sales jobs. He began visualizing for approximately 10 minutes twice a day to increase his income to $60,000 a year in his new sales position. He created a collage of images ranging from seeing, touching, and depositing a monthly check, having increased motivation and confidence with each sales call, picturing his clients becoming excited with his product and happily providing him with new referrals hearing his supervisor congratulating him and feeling his boss's hand literally patting him on the back. Also, finding it easier to talk about his product with confidence and enthusiasm. His greatest challenge was hearing himself make cold calls, which he used to avoid at every opportunity, and succeeding in obtaining the interview with his client and, of course, closing the sale. John achieved his income goal of $5,000 a month within five months, an accomplishment that took other salespeople in his corporation 12 to 14 months to attain. His comment was that he could hardly wait to sit down and create his dreams. John was also visualizing four other goals, improving a relationship, becoming more confident, taking up parasailing, and healing a minor but chronic physical problem. He felt the greatest impact that visualization had in his life was providing him with a greater sense of control. Mental imagery techniques were also utilized by Larry Mahan, former world champion rodeo rider. His procedure was very simple. He said, I try to picture a ride in my mind before I get on a bull, then I try to go by the picture. Corporate leaders such as Andrew Carnegie and Ray Kroc the founder of McDonald's, both described in their biographies how the extensive use of imagery helped them immensely in achieving their goals. Even Napoleon practiced his role as a military strategist by visualizing imaginary battles and mentally creating maps and plans years before he had his first command. Since imagery is the language of the right brain and the subconscious, mental pictures can have a powerful effect upon the body and the healing process. The pioneering visualization work of radiologist Dr. Carl Simonton has helped many of us who have done cancer counseling over the years. A typical healing image is visualizing the white blood cells as quite healthy and vigorous. They then turn into sharks or wolves, which attack the tumor, chewing it away and gradually reducing the size of the growth. As a matter of fact, the Cancer Control Agency of British Columbia thinks so highly of the visualization process that three visualization tapes I developed for cancer and one for self-healing in general are now being offered to every patient undergoing chemotherapy or radiation.
A staff member coaches each patient individually, helping them create the right healing image for them and their type of tumor, and encouraging them to picture the chemotherapy or radiation as silver bullets, which strike only the unhealthy cells and miss the healthy cells. Many persons have successfully undergone treatment without the usual side effects of nausea and hair loss because of mental focus, imagery, and a belief in their ability to gain greater control over body functions. But where does the power of visualization come from? Is it a relatively new concept of the 20th century? Or is it simply a new age idea that is practiced primarily by persons in spiritual disciplines such as meditation and healing? The earliest cultures, dating from 60,000 BC to 10,000 BC, believed in the power of the image to affect reality. Ice cave paintings of animals were considered magical representations, power symbols, to ensure a successful hunt. Shamans of every culture, and even today's shamans, have utilized imagination and powerful imagery techniques to journey to the underworld on behalf of their patients. Shamans' use of imagery led them to being called technicians of the sacred, in that they could mentally conjure up power animals that would provide answers for healing. Philosophers and priests of every culture believed in the primacy of mind over material things and used visualization as a tool for personal growth and rebirth. The Hermetic philosophers of Egypt over 4,000 years ago believed that mental images could transmute hate into love, fear into courage, illness into health. During the Middle Ages, powerful forms of focused visual concentration became the basic tool of alchemy, the idea of being able to transmute lead into gold or moving matter from one molecular structure or frequency domain into another. A number of the ancient yogi practices taught the special process of dharana, or the technique of strong visual focusing, the focusing of will or attention reinforced with supportive suggestions or what we today call affirmations. Southern Buddhists developed their powers of concentration by visualizing simple objects as colors. Incidentally, even today, one of the best techniques for strengthening your visualization skills is to imagine colors or changing the colors of familiar objects. Around the 6th century AD, Tantric Yoga spread into the spiritual practices of Buddhism and Hinduism. They developed a complete system of techniques for holding and focusing an image into one's mind in order to develop a desired outcome. Sound familiar? We use much the same technique today in order to program and achieve a goal. One of the most intriguing uses of imagery took place over 2,000 years ago. People traveled to any one of over 160 sleep temples scattered throughout Greece to receive answers about overcoming certain life problems or for healing. The patient or client would lie down on a couch adjacent to a wall and begin slowly drifting off to sleep. The temple priestess or priest went outside, kneeled down so they could peer through a circular opening next to the person's face. Following approximately five minutes of eye closure, this signaled a shift to a twilight or reverie or REM state which is characterized by very vivid images and is the onset of dreaming. This happens quite naturally since the left brain, with all its word chatter and mental static, begins quieting and the right brain, which is a source of images and dreams, begins coming to life. The priest would take advantage of this nonverbal, highly receptive state by putting their mouth up to the opening in the wall and very softly incubating seeds of verbal suggestion into the patient's subconscious mind. These verbal suggestions aided the patient in healing a certain ailment they had and assured them that answers to perplexing life problems would come to them in the form of images in their dreams. I have developed a contemporary version of the dream technique for programming goals and problem solving, which I will describe in a later session. Turn of the century anthropologist Alexandra David Neal described a fascinating visualization process that dates back 2,500 years and is still practiced by monks from Tibetan monasteries even today. In order for a young student monk to reach higher levels of spiritual practice, they must undergo a series of rituals and tests along the way. One such ritual is called Tumo, where the adept is taken to the 18,000-foot level of a mountain at night. 
he removes his robe and sits naked next to an icy stream. As the student enters a profound meditative state, his master or teacher takes a large sheet, soaks it in the icy water, and wraps the wet, freezing cloth around the adept's body. The young monk then visualizes an intense inner flame in his solar plexus and uses his imagery to dry the sheet by increasing body temperature. This must be done seven times in succession before the sun rises and the successful adept has then passed one of the hurdles to becoming a monk. Of course, there are modern analogs to that practice. Biofeedback training can teach persons to raise and lower skin temperature on their forehead and hands using simple instruments and visual imagery to overcome such problems as migraine headaches. One of the greatest visualizers of all times was Nikola Tesla, a contemporary of Edison and Einstein. Tesla was a genius and is credited with inventing alternating current, which is the energy source for almost every country in the world. He built the first electrical motor with alternating current in his mind by visualizing all the components brushes, apertures, etc., into a finished product. Then, he mentally turned on the motor and let it run uninterrupted inside his head for three months. At the end of the three-month trial period, he went into a deeper, relaxed state. Closing his eyes, he mentally took the motor apart and noted which parts wore out quickest, what had to be replaced or adjusted. He then proceeded to construct the first electric motor based on the mental rehearsal inside his brain, and his prototype worked beautifully the first time. Tesla attributed his creative genius to his extraordinary powers of visualization, which he developed as a youngster through excessive daydreaming. There are countless modern-day examples of mental rehearsal. Roger Bannister claims he broke the four-minute mile because he visualized it many times before his historic race in 1954. The successful East German bobsled team at the 1980 Winter Olympics reported that for every actual run down the course, the team members visually and successfully ran the course 100 times. More time was spent mentally rehearsing than actually doing training runs on the course. In a sense, this program is about integrating ancient techniques of visualization with modern concepts of how the brain works. Thus you can learn to become your own wizard or alchemist, creating your own magic for personal growth and transformation. So, from our brief overview, you can see that mental imagery has been used almost since the beginning of recorded time as a tool for self-direction. The mental movie or snapshot acts like a magnet alerting the subconscious, which in turn will create the optimal combination of factors to help achieve the goal. Visual imagery, therefore, becomes part of the brain's mental software, which, if repeated and programmed, creates a self-fulfilling prophecy of your dream. The difference between a successful and unsuccessful person is this. The successful person can tap into deeper reaches of the mind, where the will to succeed and make things happen resides. Now, are you ready and willing to put the power of visualization into practice? Are you willing to trust a process that's been used since 60,000 BC? Are you willing to trust a mental process that has produced results for everyone, from the hermetic philosophers of Egypt to Roger Bannister? Great! Let's begin with a warm-up exercise. If you are driving, wait to do this exercise until you're in a quiet place where you can give it your full attention. I would like you to select an end goal image of something that you would like to change in your life. Create as much detail in this end goal image as you can. Then think of your pre-goal image the way you are right now. So have those two images in mind. And by the way, these two images can be in any area of your life, relationships, health, finances, sports. Make sure you have a pre-goal image and an end-goal image of what your desired outcome is. Now, close your eyes and take a few moments to focus on your breathing, inhaling relaxation, exhaling tension. 
Inhaling, relaxation, exhaling, tension. Do that two or three more times on your own at your own speed. Now, turning to your pre-goal image, the way things are right now in your life in that area, and picture it, but don't put too much energy into that image. Now, in two seconds or less, whoosh away that old image and picture the new image, the desired outcome. But while you're looking at that image, I want you to awaken each one of your senses and bring every one of the five senses into play. Seeing, hearing, feeling or touching, smelling, if appropriate, and tasting. Ignite each one of your senses in your own way. Good. Now, let's go back to the pregoal image. Picture it, but with very little energy. In two seconds or less, whoosh away that old image and picture the newly desired image with gusto. Pump the feelings into it now. Really pump it in. Pump it in. Feel it. Feel it. And release. Go back to the old image. And then quickly into the new image. Feel it. Pump it. Sense it. Luxuriate in the image. And release. And I'd like you on your own now three, four, five, six times to go back and forth, putting very little energy into the old image, but really pumping the new image with excitement, with gusto. Go ahead. Good. Release that image now. One last thing, and this is part of my trademark. I like to suggest that our dream life, our dream personality, will work with our conscious personality. So I'd like you to get used to suggesting to your deeper self that you will have a series of night dreams over the next several weeks that will take that image that you just pumped into your subconscious, that your dreams will create a series of dream blueprints, blueprints of the future for that particular goal. I would like you to make that suggestion to your subconscious two or three times. Good. And that way we can ensure that your conscious and subconscious minds will be working as partners, as partners, to help you achieve your goals. And just take a few moments now, orient yourself back, alert yourself, always coming back with a smile. So, the key to effectiveness in your life is to visualize how you want things to be and then to act on that visualization. Most people's actions reflect old programming from their past that is no longer appropriate or effective, but not you. From this day forward, with the skills you'll learn from this program, you'll be excited about your ability to transform your life through consistent mental rehearsal. In the remainder of our program, we will combine left brain information processes and technique with right brain relaxation and the experiencing of various visualization exercises. This will enable you to reinforce and imprint your goals at a much deeper level of mind where most of our resources reside. As you go through the principles and techniques of visualization that you're about to learn with as little as 10 minutes practice each day, you'll begin to notice almost immediate changes both at home and at your workplace. You'll be firmly in control, able to solve problems effectively, make decisions with ease, and feel really good about yourself. You'll have discovered an innate power that will be a friendly companion on the road to achieving your greatest dreams.